Hello and welcome to another episode here on the War of the Rebellion channel. Today we are going to start a new series where we are going to explore material I covered in my book Liberty and Slavery published by Alice U Press. In the series we are going to look at a number of individuals, migrants from Austria, Hungary, Poland, Germany and Ireland and how they experienced European revolutionary events, how they came to the United States and witnessed the war of the rebellion and in a few cases also what they did after the war of the rebellion. Born June 19, 1802, Theodor Olshausen attended school in Glückstadt in Eutin, eventually started a law degree in Kiel at the university. Like many students, he transferred around. In 1820, he was in Jena at the university, where he became part of a so-called Burschenschaft, a student fraternity. Because of the political situation at the time, it was unacceptable to be part of that, and he decided to go into exile, first working in Paris, and then as a mass teacher in Switzerland. From there he returned to Germany, and became editor of the Neue Augsburger Zeitung. In 1828 he finally finished his law degree, but instead of embracing a career as a lawyer, he decided to go for newspaper publishing and worked at the Correspondenzblatt in Kiel, which he quickly turned into a nationalist paper for the German population of Holstein. He became part of the so-called Neuholsteiner movement, which emphasized the Ewig Ungedeilt clause of the Treaty of Ribe, which asked that the duchies of Holstein and Schleswig to be never separated. He looked at Denmark as an underdeveloped country, intellectually backwards. When in January 1848, King Christian VIII died and was replaced by Frederick VII, there was a lot of conversation about the incorporation of Schleswig into the Danish monarchy. Nationalists in Schleswig-Holstein opposed this. And when the king actually decided to do so, the nationalist provisional government sent a mission to Copenhagen with their demands for more autonomy. But when they are unheard, they leave. And the Schleswig-Holstein revolution begins. They immediately make sure to claim legitimacy for their cause by claiming that they are going to govern in the name of their unfree sovereign, the Duke of Holstein and the Duke of Schleswig which of course also is the king of Denmark, whom they are rebelling against. The conflict goes through a number of stages. While Olshausen was part of the delegation to Copenhagen and part of the early provisional government, he eventually has a fallout with them. And he demands that the provisional government act stronger, take on more responsibilities, act with more force. But the reality of the situation 
is that Schleswig-Holstein is eventually isolated. And by the end of January 1851, the so-called Stadthalterschaft, which had governed the duchies for almost two years by that point, had to surrender. As one of the primary revolutionaries, Olshausen did not receive an amnesty. And having once already experienced exile, he again went into exile, this time to the United States. If these brief episodes sparked your interest about the individuals covered, please consider not only subscribing and liking this channel, commenting on this episode, but also looking into purchasing my book, Liberty and Slavery, published by LSU Press.